Welcome to episode 7 of the Metamagic Monster Manual, taking monsters from all over gaming and shoving them into 5th edition stat blocks to give to you guys to use in your games for free. This is page 4 of the Dead by Daylight chapter. Previously, we have gone over the Trapper, the Wraith, and the Hag, but now we're going to be ramping the difficulty up a little bit more in this newest stat block for the Nurse. Now, the nurse by design is supposed to be a killer who hunts down the survivors based on their injuries and is able to track them through their grunts of pain or their blood trails much easier than the other killers. So hopefully this stat block that I've created will keep that theme of hunter in mind. So with that, let's get into it. And so to begin with the stat block, she is considered a medium sized undead with the chaotic evil tag, same as all the other killers. She has an armor class of 14 with only her natural armor giving her a bonus because she only wears cloth otherwise. She has 150 hit points, moving it up from the standard 100 that we've had for most of these killers so far, and a movement speed of 30 feet as she is the one killer in the game that is slower or about the same speed as the survivors, or in this case, the party members. For the stat block, there isn't too many things special here. She has slightly above average strength and dexterity, a little bit higher constitution at 14, but a tremendously higher intelligence than the standard amount all the way up at 18. Again, playing into that tracker role very well. She has a above average wisdom at 14 and a standard charisma at 10. Regarding her damage immunities, she is immune to necrotic damage as she is an undead nurse. And she does also, like the other killers, have an immunity to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks, but again, could be toned down to a resistance if your party does happen to be low on magic. She is immune to the blinded condition and has blind sight of 60 feet and a passive perception of 12. She speaks zero languages and is a challenge rating of six, one up from the previous five. But what does make the nurse unique is her abilities being her main Spencer's last breath, as well as her three perks, Thanatophobia, A Nurse's Calling, and Strider. So we're going to jump into some gameplay and talk about how we can translate all of these into the stat block. So starting right off the bat, let's talk about her main ability, Spencer's Last Breath. As a bonus action, the nurse magically teleports along with any equipment it is wearing or carrying up to 30 feet to an unoccupied or occupied space. The nurse does not need to see her destination, but will take 1d10 force damage should she end the teleport in an, in an occupied space, as well as be pushed into the nearest unoccupied space. As part of the same bonus action, she may teleport to a separate location within 15 feet of her as a secondary blink. If the nurse does use this secondary blink, she becomes briefly exhausted, having her movement until the end of her next turn. So in total, she could transport 75 feet per turn, but she would become pretty exhausted if she decides to do so. Moving on to her three perks, we have a Nurse's Calling. Anytime a creature heals within a 60-foot radius of the nurse, the nurse automatically knows the exact location of that creature. Next up, we have her second ability, Strider. The nurse has advantage on perception checks when used to locate creatures through sound as this typically is used in game to find survivors through grunts of pain. So that is how this is translated here. But both of these perks are meant to complement her main third perk, Thanatophobia. And this is where she gets most of her power. The nurse gains an additional plus one to hit and plus one damage die to her attacks for each creature that does not have full hit points during the encounter, meaning any creature that is injured, a party member that does not have full HP, gives her these stacks. So what is her damage die exactly? Well, her only action is the Surgical Saw, which is a melee weapon attack plus four to hit at base with a five foot range and deals 1d8 plus one slashing damage. So each time a creature gets injured with Thanatophobia, this could stack up very high to up to 4d8, 5d8, or even 6d8 with large party sizes. And this may sound familiar if you watched my last episode talking about the hag with the hags devour hope hex giving pretty much the same effect however the difference between this perk thanatophobia and hex devour hope one is that thanatophobia is not tied to a hex totem meaning that it is not an all or nothing deal so there is some variability in how often this will get this thanatophobia perk will get used meaning that it could spiral up to like 68 damage, but then you could also have the nurse lose stacks if party members get healed up to full. 
So it is a very up or down hill battle just from this perk alone, as opposed to it just being a constantly stacking perk with the hag that gets immediately ruined when somebody destroys her hex totem. Now, the idea behind making this staff block was to be an introductory boss for a more mid-level party. The previous three staff blocks were meant for more low-end levels like one through four or five. This would be a starting at level five monster you should probably throw at them as she does have a beefy amount of hit points at 150 and she can have some very high spiraling damage. So it is a good introductory level medium encounter. As a DM, the best way to run the nurse would be to locate any straggler party members out land your hit and then ideally if you're not in a chase blink away so that you can gain your stacks of thanatophobia to gain higher damage then charge back in next turn or next few turns deal more damage and keep spiraling your damage out of control to take out your party <laughs> The ability to blink anywhere allows you to get out of binds pretty easily, so be sure to run this killer as deviously as you can. But guys, that is how I would run the nurse in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. The stat block will be located down in the description below, take you to my Twitter where you can find a picture, download it, take it, use it, have fun with it, guys. This wasn't as complicated of a monster as last time as I didn't really have to introduce any new mechanics like the hex totems from last time. So until the next episode, guys, have fun, stay safe, and as always, happy gaming.